A waveform is a graphical representation of a wave. Sound synthesis is based on five waveforms. The sine, the triangle, the saltus or saw, the pulse and the square, which is a particular case of the pulse. To use each of them effectively in sound synthesis, compositions or audio programming, you need to know the basic properties. Mathematical formula to generate it, its time domain visualization, amplitude spectrum, so which harmonics are present and how their amplitudes decay, and of course, how it sounds. In this video, you'll learn all these properties about the five basic waveforms. Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from dwolfsound.com and if you're new to this channel, here you can learn how to process sound using self-written software. Before we dive into the five basic waveforms, I will shortly explain what are the benefits of learning the properties of these waveforms. Knowing them will help you exploit the capabilities of modern synthesizers, regardless of whether you are a professional musician or an experimenting hobbyist. It will allow you to achieve the exact timbre you desire, even during live performances. The knowledge of the basic waveforms will also allow you to understand the behavior of oscillators, VCOs, or modulators, LFOs. You will be able to use these waveforms in mathematical derivations of analysis, synthesis, and audio effects. You will also be able to write efficient code to generate these waveforms. You will be able to actually hear the bugs in your audio plugins or other audio software. This knowledge will help you prevent aliasing and also track down where the aliasing may come from. As you can see, the benefits are numerous and it's just a single area of audio plugin development. If you want to know what other knowledge areas are needed for audio plugin development, check out my free audio plugin developer checklist, which you can find under dwolfsound.com slash checklist. And now let's jump right into the waveforms. The first waveform is the sine waveform, which is the most basic waveform in sound synthesis. At 220 Hz, a sine sounds like this. The sine formula looks like this, where f is the frequency of the sine in Hz, and t is time in seconds. The time domain representation of a sine looks like this. The amplitude spectrum of a sine is very boring, because it consists of just one partial, the fundamental frequency. That makes sense because spectrum calculation assumes that the analyzed signal is a superposition, a sum of signs, and one sign consists of just, well, one sign. A triangle is just a little bit more complicated than the sign. A triangle wave at 220 Hz sounds like this. As you can hear, it's a bit brighter than the sign. The triangle formula is this where f is the triangle's frequency in hertz and t is time in seconds. The triangle waveform in the time domain looks like this. It indeed looks like a triangle. This makes the triangle formula more intuitive. A triangle waveform is in essence the difference between a linear function and a shifted step function. This difference increases and decreases piecewise linearly, and so we obtain a triangle. The amplitude spectrum of the triangle waveform contains only odd harmonics. The amplitudes of the harmonics decay as 1 over n squared, where n is the harmonics index, so the fundamental has n equals 1, the first overtone has n equals 2, and so on. The next wave is the square wave, which is more interesting than the sine or the triangle because of its characteristic empty timbre. At 220 Hz, the square wave sounds like this. For me, the simplest formula for the square waveform is just taking the sine of the sine, where f is the square's frequency in Hz and t is time in seconds. Of course, alternative formulas are possible. 
As you can see, the square waveform in the time domain has a rectangular shape. The amplitude spectrum of the square waveform consists of only odd harmonics, exactly as was the case for the triangle, but the amplitudes of squares harmonics decay slower than in the case of the triangle. They decay as 1 over n, where n is the harmonics index, so n equals 1 corresponds to the fundamental. The next wave, and my personal favorite, is the Saltoth waveform, also known as the SAW. At 220 Hz, it sounds like this. Nice. The simplest formula for the Saltoth wave is a modular approach, where f is the Saltoth frequency in Hz, t is time in seconds, and percentage is the modular operator applied to real values. The formula reads increase the value linearly, jump back to zero every period, scale to the 0 1 range, and then expand the range from 0 1 to minus 1 1. Here you can see the Saltooth in the time domain. This is the so-called ramp up Saltooth because its slope is rising within each period. Should it be falling, it would be called ramp down Saltooth. Since it's just a matter of phase inversion, ramp up and ramp down variants have the same properties. The slope matters the most when we use the Saltooth waveform to modulate some other parameter, like when we use the Saltooth in a low frequency oscillator LFO. Then we can create a periodically rising sensation in the ramp up case or periodically falling sensation in the ramp down case. The name saw comes from the teeth like shape of the waveform. The amplitude spectrum of the Saltooth waveform contains odd and even harmonics. The amplitudes of the Saltooth harmonics decay as 1 over n, where n is the harmonics index. So again, n equals 1 corresponds to the fundamental frequency. The last waveform to be discussed is the pulse waveform, also called a pulse train. The pulse waveform is a generalization of the square waveform. An example, pulse waveform at 220 Hz sounds like this. Here you can see the time domain representation of the signal. Why did I say that it is an example waveform? Because the pulse train has a parameter called duty cycle, which controls for which fraction of the period the value of the waveform is 1. In our case, the duty cycle is 20%, so for the 20% of the cycle, the value of the waveform is 1, and for the remaining 80%, the value is minus 1. As you might have guessed, for duty cycle equal to 50%, we obtain the square waveform. I know no simple formula for the pulse wave generation, so I will share with you the Fourier series based formula. It consists of summing the harmonics of the pulse waveform up to infinity or the Nyquist frequency if we have a finite sample rate. The amplitude spectrum of the pulse changes with the duty cycle. This short animation shows you how these two relate. You can see that for duty cycle equal to 50%, we obtain the square's amplitude spectrum. The first dip from the left in the amplitude spectrum of the pulse wave is determined by the duty cycle. The dip occurs at harmonic which index is d to minus 1. For example, for the square wave, the duty cycle is half, so the first dip occurs at the second harmonic. In the figure, you can also see a small glitch around the direct current frequency, also called the DC or 0 Hz frequency. That is because for very high or very low values of the duty cycle, the constant component is pretty significant. The mean of the waveform's values is significantly non-zero. I have deliberately hidden the DC component from the plots for clarity, but some of it is still present in the animation because of the so-called spectral leakage. The DC component must be kept in mind in musical applications because it adds no musical information, we cannot hear it, but it can damage the hardware that it runs through. In summary, in this video you learned everything about the basic waveforms, the sine, the triangle, the square, the saw and the pulse that you need for sound synthesis. Being familiar with these waveforms will help you in exploiting the capabilities of synthesizers and coding your own. These waveforms are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to developing your own software synthesizers. If you want to know what other information is necessary to develop audio plugins, download my free 
audio plugin developer checklist at dwolfsound.com slash checklist. As usual, you will find a written version of the video on the Wolf Sound blog. I have linked to it in the description below. If you want to write your own audio algorithms, be sure to subscribe, like the video and turn on notifications so that you won't miss out on the next video, which will be about the envelopes in sound synthesis. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Take care.